Ladies and gentlemen, Command & Conquer Rivals is finally out and that means you guys can get your hands on it and you can test it out and see what you think. Now, for those of you that have already started playing and enjoy the game, I have got 10 tips to help make you a better commander and also keep you less frustrated when playing the game. Tip number one. Yes, this is a really simple one, and I know a lot of you will have done this already, but it is something that I need to drill home into everyone's minds. Link your account. So you just need to go down to the settings tab, and then you need to click link account. And you can link your email address, your Facebook, and also your Google Play. This allows you whenever you change device, or uninstall or reinstall, or just want to switch onto another device anyway, this allows you to recover your account and your progress. If you do not do this, and you somehow lose access to your account on the device that you're using, it will be very hard for you to recover it. Trust me, I know. Absolutely no. <laughs> I've already lost one account playing this game. So make sure that you link your account. Tip number two, join an alliance. An alliance is a collection of people, up to 30 people in an alliance, and it allows you to do multiple things. You can watch replays of your alliance members that have shared those replays. You can friendly battle against each other, which means you're allowed to set up a friendly battle. You can then use normal rules or friendly for rules. Normal rules means players play at their current level, and friendly rules means everybody's units are set to level five. This allows you to get past the level imbalance and allow you to practice certain tactics on a level playing field. Also a great place to test out new decks if you don't want to take them onto the ladder. You can also donate and request cards. For instance, I can donate to my uh, alliance mate, but I can also go and request cards that I can get. And that allows you to focus in on specific cards that you want to level up, which is really important because the higher level your units, obviously, the better that they're going to do as the game progresses. Tip number three, learn from others. There are multiple ways to do this in Command & Conquer Rivals. When I started, I went straight to the leaderboard and I looked at the leaderboard. I sort of said, okay, who do I want to have a look at? Let's take, for instance, uh, Jade Zion. I went to their page. I had a look at their weekly best used deck, 35% win rate, by the way, with their favorite unit, obviously. You can have a look at their stats. You can then look at uh, Nod as well. So you can also change that over to Nod when you start playing Nod and you can see that their overall win rate. I then can go to their armies and have a look and copy the armies that they're using if I wanted to. And most importantly, their match history. Their match history allows me to go and have a look at certain things that they've done, including mechanics, which are really important. The replay function in Command & Conquer Rivals is really well developed and it will allow you to see exactly what the top players are doing with their units and how they are looking to employ their tactics to win games. It allows you also then to try and copy the general movements that the enemy top players are making. Remember, you might not have the units available to you that these guys have. However, the general strategies that they employ are things that you can learn from, including a lot of the mechanical things that these guys bring to the table. The replay function also allows you to review your own replays, which again, helps you see where you're going wrong and hopefully will allow you to improve as a player. The other part of learning from this screen is going to Command and Conquer TV, which allows you to, first of all, see the activity of your friends and your guildmates. But if you go to Command and Conquer TV, which is a really, really good way of seeing exactly what's going on in your league. Let's go down to Silver, for instance, and you can filter by the matchup, GDI versus Nod, GDI versus GDI and nod, nod versus Nod, for instance, but let's have a look at all. And you can have a look at the popular decks that are being played, and you can have a look at who is taking the victories. So, so you can see here that everyone's kind of got the similar kind of run. A lot of people running with the Titans, for instance, right now in Silver 3, but you'll be able to notice the general flavor of what people are taking onto the battlefield at this level. And that allows you to learn and maybe pick up some of the better units that you have in your own decks to create something that will work for you in the leagues that you're in. You also can go and check out content creators. They will also have indications about what you should be doing in terms of building your decks. I would recommend a few on uh, the YouTubes. <laughs> the YouTubes right now, myself included, Captain Benzie, uh, Alicia Destiny or Alicia Destiny. 
plenty of really good content creators out there on YouTube for you guys to go and check out and also lots of great Twitch streamers including Bike Rush Owns uh, and people like that who will always be streaming and talking about the decks that they have chosen and why they have done it. Now, if a scoundrel had remembered to turn on his microphone when he was filming this bit, he would be telling you a little bit about the best way to use your diamonds, as well as making sure that you claim your free crates and also get any daily cards that you think are relevant to your leveling up process. Unfortunately, he muted his microphone, so you're just going to have to be stuck with me, other big scoundrel, telling you exactly what to do. The best way to use your diamonds in this game is actually by rushing the crates that you get from the fuel. The ordering crates that you get, that is the best way to spend your diamonds. It's actually the most cost-effective way of generating new cards. Now, obviously, if you want a big burst of cards, you can do that through an epic crate or a colossal crate if you have that kind of money to spend. But if you just have limited diamonds, the best way to spend them is by rushing the crates. And often, you might want to rush the rares or the uncommons, but realistically, it doesn't that matter that much. And I always generally tend to spend my diamonds on rushing crates. Yeah, I kind of forgot to turn on my microphone again. Regardless, let's talk about leveling units. When you level units, you want to make sure you're leveling units that are relevant to you and relevant to the decks that you are playing. This might be making sure that you're always leveling meta units like shockwave troopers, riflemen, predator tanks, missile troopers, pit bulls. They are like the bread and butter units that you're definitely going to want to keep as a high level as possible. But also if you like a specific unit and you find a way to make it work in decks over and over again, then you might want to consider leveling that as well. For instance, I really used to like playing the orca and I used to spam it in loads of decks so I often used to level it up. But remember, always make sure you're leveling those core units too, the ones that are always relevant across whatever tier you're playing in. When it comes to building a deck, you want to build a balanced deck. Now, I have a YouTube video on this. I'll link it in the description below. But in the premise, we are talking about having an answer to everything that your opponent could throw at you in terms of the unit types that you're going to see. You need an answer to infantry, an answer to vehicles, and an answer to aircraft. If you don't have an answer in your deck for one of those things, then you are going to come unstuck versus certain opponents that run that type of unit. And that leads us on nicely to our next point. The next point is knowing your counters. Command & Conquer and Command & Conquer throughout the ages has always been a little bit of a rock, paper, scissors game in terms of what is good versus what. Now, you can read up on the counters on the upgrade screen looking at your units. They have a strong versus and then an icon to indicate buildings, infantry, aircraft, and vehicles. You want to read up on the units that you're using to make sure you know exactly what they do and what they're good versus. Now, most of this may come from experience, however. Not all counters are born equal, so you need to know exactly how powerful your units are versus the counters they are supposed to work against. Uh, and in my case, you know, I played a lot of games, I figured out exactly what worked for me in various scenarios, and it's all about just getting that experience on board and knowing exactly when those counters work out and when they don't. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we're moving on to some of the in-game stuff now, and we're going to look at the importance of scouting. Scouting is using one of your units to understand what your opponent's strategy is, either through scouting their buildings, how many harvesters they've got, or what kind of units they're building. Let's take a look right here. I've used my shockwave troopers, and I can see clearly that he has gone for a war factory, and has also got one harvester on the bottom side of the map. Now, I'm a little bit suspicious, which is why I go to the top and I can scout out his second harvester, which allows me to edit my strategy, pump out my jump jet troopers, and then start to put pressure on him. The economy lead that I got just from scouting and understanding what was going on allowed me to win the game pretty easily. Scouting is important. This topic could be a video by itself, but unfortunately we don't have that kind of time. But learning how to micromanage your units is really important to the success of your future Command & Conquer Rivals career. In this instance, I've got these zone troopers chasing my titan around. I micromanage my titan to bring the zone troopers into an awkward position versus my wolverine, and even keep my titan alive long enough to take out a second harvester. In this instance, you're going to see myself using the shockwave troopers to both body block and also use my jump jet troopers microing around his harvester as I go aggressive in the early game. You can see here that I will not want my jump jet troopers to go face to face with the riflemen as they'll lose. I'm then going to use my 
jump jet troopers to go round and micro away from his rifleman, buying enough time with the body block of the shockwave troopers to get a harvester kill, and that economy boost is really important. And finally, having a look at some body blocking, right at the end of the point here, I'm using my Titan just back and forth, stopping any movement from those missile troopers, and I immediately body block at the bottom with my Wolverine to stop the Pitbull from getting onto the platform too. Microwing is a huge topic, but as is this next one, be reactive and be predictive. Sometimes your strategy might not be going the way that you want it to. In this particular instance, I can see the guy has got Orcas coming up against my Titan. There is nothing that my Titan is going to do versus Orcas, so if it's better for me to just get the most use out of it, out of it but ultimately sacrifice the Titan to make sure that I have room for more units. Now I've started pumping out things that are good versus Orcas. He has got three Orcas on the field. I immediately know that his best response is Rifleman. I have predicted and brought out a Wolverine, which has given me enough space to try and win the game. By the time his Mammoth tank is out, I already have Titans ready to respond, and with a bit of body blocking at the end, we end up winning the game. Reacting and predicting in games is important, and don't be afraid to sacrifice your units to free up the unit cap if they aren't working in the strategy that you're presented with. And finally, understand your deck's win condition. This will definitely take time, but you've got to know that each deck has unique win conditions. This deck here with two tech units is not going to have the same win condition as a deck that runs multiple low tier units like this one that I've got here. For instance, the Jackson deck that I showed you, it's generally a double harvester deck with a late game win condition. The deck that I'm presenting you here is a very, very early game win condition which requires you to win the first point. Each deck is going to have variable win conditions and it's important that you understand which ones that you're presented with. I'm going to show you this game between a guy called uh, Zhao Longa and I think that's how you pronounce it, an Alpha. It may look like Zhao Longa doesn't really know what he's doing. He's not going aggressive with those jump jet troopers. He's not trying to go against the double harvester which he has scouted out. But that's not his deck's win condition. Watch what he does as soon as he wins the first missile. Once he wins that first missile, he rushes everything at his base and then uses the ion cannon along with drones to constantly spam. He's already won the first missile, so he's got plenty of time. The only thing that he needs to do is build up enough Tiberium to get another use of his ion cannon, which ends up winning in the game. He was very clearly tuned in to his deck's win condition. Now, how do you find out how that deck plays? Well, I would watch lots of people playing the same deck as you. I would also watch uh, content creators, look at meta videos, and keeping up with the meta and understanding the win conditions of the decks that you have is very important. It will come with experience, but generally know that heavy tech units give a late game win condition. Running with lots of aggro units in the early game means you generally have to win the first missile. You'll understand your decks as you go along in Command & Conquer Rivals. Right, I hope you've enjoyed it. A beginner guide to getting involved in Command & Conquer Rivals and getting onto the battlefield and winning. I hope to see you soon up in Tiberium League.